this is day three. And what we're gonna be focusing on on day three is the candlestick blueprint. So really understanding how to see what's going on in the markets. You know, regardless of where a trend is, regardless of where a structure is, if you understand what's going on and have an idea of what you're, the last candle that you're looking at or just a series of candles, you can start to build a story in the markets. So that's basically gonna be day three is the candlestick blueprint. So the first part is just understanding the first part is going to be understanding the candlestick patterns and why they are important. And the second one is going to be understanding the chart patterns, how to basically have a, I guess, an analysis strictly based off of what the candles are doing. You know, you know what your trend, you, you'll, we'll teach you what trend is, we'll teach you what structure is, but knowing what the markets are saying. And that's basically gonna be today's class, candlestick patterns and chart patterns. So when you're looking at the markets now, for example, we have, you know, this, let's look, let's pick a random pair. Well, let me keep it on this pair, actually. For example, we're going to teach you exactly what, why this candle is what it is versus why this candle, these candles are what they are. And really understanding how to confirm a trade using candles. So we went over yesterday, just to recap, the anatomy of one candle, right? So this is a downward candle. And you would see that on a downward candle, the open of the candle is at the top. So the top of the body, that would be considered your opening candle. Opening price is the top of the body. And then for the closing price, of course, it would be at the bottom of the buy. Now, this is for a downward candle. It's the opposite for an upward candle. So that would be your closing price. What you have up here are what's called wicks, the, thing, the lines that extend beyond the candles. The top of the candles is the high of the time frame. Then the bottom would be considered the low of the time frame. So the low of that time. Low of the time frame. And then what you would consider the bigger part is considered the body. So the bigger part is the body. So that's, that's the anatomy of a basic candle, just a straightforward candle. Now, that was the end of yesterday. Today, we're gonna to get into the variations of a single candle because it's really important to understand this detail. So that way, when you're looking later on at trend and you're looking at your analysis later on, then you understand where the markets are at and you know what you're looking for in the markets and confirmations for different trades. So let's look here. So these are so these are some of the more popular um, I guess candlestick patterns. Now you don't have to be able to trade every one like as far as as a confirmation but having an idea of what's going on is you know paramount to understanding where your analysis is. Now, for me, the main, the main candles that I particularly trade are engulfing candles, tweezer tops, and long 
upper shadows, you know, or the, uh, the bigger variation of shooting star. I'm going to show you why these things are important. So if you look at, if you look at this right here, we're going to start at the bearish side. This was called a bearish continuation. We can, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. Bearish continuation. So if the markets are moving, so in this case, the markets are moving downwards, you have a pullback and then you have an engulfing candle that supersedes at least a few candles in the pullback. That's a continuation pattern for a downtrend. So sometimes people use it as confirmation. You know, sometimes people wait for this candle to cross a, a moving average, which we'll get into later and cross that line and also be a, con a continuation or a confirmation. The bearish Hammurabi, you know, you wouldn't really see too many of those in a Forex market. Now in the stock market, you would, but in the Forex market, you wouldn't, really wouldn't see it. So Haramis, you know, I've never, I've never really said that word out loud. These are more stock oriented candlesticks. You don't really find that in Forex. Same thing, a dark cover cloud. So these three, you wouldn't really worry about. Now, you know, you got here, we call it the bearish engulfing. You know, a bearish engulfing can either have a gap. So like, for example, this is where this candle would have closed. And then this candle would have opened. That little price difference would be considered a gap. A bearish engulfing can be either a gap like this or it can open at even levels. So there's no gap between the closing and opening of the next candle. And you have the evening doji star. So what this indicates is that you have momentum coming up into a particular area. You see this as a indecision candle. So what you're seeing here is that, you know, people that are trying to buy, people that are trying to sell are at a crossroads. And prices at a crossroads with that uh, with that market. So you have what's called, you know, a doji. So this will be considered a doji in the markets if it, if you're just looking at this, just the one candle. But what makes it the doji star is that there is momentum, then there is a stoppage, then there's a momentum shift. So like say if you're looking at a certain price or a certain area and you see that, that could be a confirmation to go down. And, you know, you may be looking at all these candle patterns and trying to think about memorizing them all. Me, you really, you really could really just trade maybe two or three and really be fine. Like as far as like actively look for them. But this is just an idea, and you can see a pattern. There's a pattern with bearish. There's a pattern with bearish uh, confirmation patterns or bearish candlestick patterns. Is that what what happens is you usually have momentum going up, then there's either a shift down or a stoppage, or a stoppage down. So like a stoppage would be like the Doji. So it's, in, it's giving you a story. Each candle is a story. Buyers are in control. Sellers came into the market fast. And then you have what's called here a gap. So a gap would be buyers coming in. There's a lot of buying pressure at the end, so much so that the market moves before it opens. So in that split second between the closing price and the opening price, price moved. So that, that pattern still remains true. Bullish momentum, bearish shift. Now, one that I really, really like to trade, especially when I'm trading price action, is a double inverted hammers. So inverted hammers, basically, if you look at this, is like a hammer upside down. It can be a bearish candle, or it could be a bullish candle. As long as the body is on the lower part, it's considered a bearish trend. So when you have like, 
what I like to see is like, say you have something like this going into an area and then it's followed by this, then that's a very strong confirmation that the markets may be shifting. And we could literally go one by one and just, I'm gonna just use the bearish trends and you'll just see it if you look on the bullish side, it's just the opposite of this. And I'm gonna show you, you know, why you would look at these only at certain points in the market. So here's what, here's what, here's one of my other favorites too. You know, the shooting star, you know, especially when there's two big like green candles going into it. What does that indicate? Well, of course you got bullish momentum. You, there was bullish momentum in this area, but at one point, this candle, this candle was like this candle where it was like a green candle like this. But in that time frame, price not only pushed back down, but it went below where it opened. Because remember, a red candle, the opening price is here, the closing price is at the bottom. So it opened here, went up, and then momentum put it back down. That's why that's called a shooting star because it was up and now it's down. So let's look at let's look at the real markets when it comes to these. Let's, let's go back. Let's look at the real markets, right? And let's look at popular spots where momentum happened or momentum shifted more so. So let's start. Let's start with this move here. Let's start with this move, right? So if we zoom in on what happened before this move. What do you see? You see momentum going down into an area. And that area, wherever this is, there's resistance, support. We'll get into that at a later date. But this area had enough interest to cause the candles to start changing. So what do you see here? you see a doji. Only the reason it's not an inverted hammer because you see that there's this wick at the bottom. So you see a doji here. You see this was more of an inverted hammer because it's because it's a smaller wick. It gets a little bit eye testy when it comes to inverted hammers because you can have a small wick with them, but as long as it's not, I guess, pur like proportionate to the the body of the, cam the candle. So the way that I determine between an inverted hammer and a wick, if the wick at the bottom, or like if the wick at the bottom, the smaller wick is longer than the body, then it's not an inverted hammer. This candle, the wick is shorter than the body. And then the wick above it is longer than the body. That's, that's a hammer. This is a doji because you see how they're evenly placed on each end. But look at this. You have a combination. You have you have a doji, you have an inverted hammer, and another doji following each other into the air. If we go back, if we go back, you can see we go to bullish, go to bullish sides, you see morning doji star. You can see that there. And you see that basically what happened and doesn't it's not going to be perfect but you want to see the relevancy so if we go back to that part you have the downward movement here and then you have dojis more so and then you have an upward shift it can count it can be you it can be close to it, it doesn't have to be like one two three but if it's like you know two candles doing the same thing and two candles doing the doji, then candle or two doing the, the other, the shift, then you can consider that, that candlestick formation. So you see, you start to understand it. So when you're in that moment and you see the shift, then you already, you already confirmed that momentum was already changing. You already were looking at it beforehand. So when this started to pop off, you already know where it was going. And then that followed there. Let's look, and that's not the clinic example, but let's look at let's look at this one right here, this little move right here. That move. So what does this look like? This looks like the shooting star. 
this is like the bear shooting star. We go back, we go to the shooting star here. So you have the upward movement, then you have the star itself, which is an inverted hammer. You know, this candle here is an inverted hammer. The fact that it's surrounded by these candles making a shooting star. It's just, you don't have to memorize the names. You just have to know what it means when you see it. So that's why I don't really care about the names. So you see that upward movement, you got the, you got the inverted hammer, and then it's followed by the downward movement. So we go back to here. Move this out the way. So we go back to here. Upward movement, doji, downward movement. It went down more. It created, that's what created the move. And it literally, they repeat each, they repeat each other. Let's look at, let's look, let's go look for a bigger move. Let's look for a bigger move. So let's look at this move here. So this, this move here, right? So let's zoom in and you start to see it repeat itself. So you have, you have upward movement, then you have doji, 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 shooting star, inverted hammer, whichever you want, you want to call it. So it's a shooting star because there's a bullish candle before it and a bearish candle after it, but this candle by itself is an inverted hammer. All in this area. So what is that telling you? That price momentum is changing in this area that is confirmed when this candle hits. So now because you already saw this happening through these candles and then this happens here, then you know that there's downward momentum and you would be looking to sell. And then the, what makes it better is the bigger, the bigger the candlestick, the bigger the time frame, the more important the candlestick patterns are. So I love looking at candlestick patterns on the four hour. Because look, look here. This is a this is a major one. This is a major one here. So you have this big move here. And then what do you see? You see strong momentum. And then you see these strong, these large dojis. So that means a lot of action happened here. And then you see an engulfing candle. So you see how they mix, they kind of mix. So you have a combination of a morning, of like a morning star or a tweezer bottom. So we can go back here. Let me see, we got the tweezer bottoms on here. Da, 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 da. It doesn't have it on this one. Let me see. Forks powder. Forks candlestick. Here we go. Nope. So you have it, you have it here. So you have like the pin bars at the bottom. So bullish pin bar, bullish pin bar, and this is bearish. So you see this was a, a doji followed by, you can call that a pin bar, you can call that a hammer, but it's more of a doji. Sometimes they're ugly like that but you know that something's going on here. And then there's the momentum. Forex, let me see what I can find, what I was specifically talking about with this one. Forex candle, tweezer, bottoms. Here we go. So you have downward momentum and then you have what's called a tweezer bottoms. So you have identical, identical reversal candles, one of one, one of one color, another of the other color, and it confirms up. And you're not going to memorize this on, on one, on one sitting, not, not candlesticks. I'm just introducing the idea to you because each candle had each candlesticks, they have a meaning. That's, that's the whole point of this class is understand they have a meaning. Let's see here. Let's look at another example. So you see here, if we look, see if I can zoom in. 
if we look here, oh, it's not gonna let me, there we go. So if you look here, you see how it's not necessarily perfect, but you have similar candles, one of one color and uh, one of the other color in one area. It was like a double of them going on. You had these and you also had these twice over. So it's like a double tweezer bottom. And that momentum is what, you zoom out, change the momentum of the chart where you had a massive move action after it. So the candlesticks give you hints of what's about to happen. That's why it's important to know it. So like, if you know that there's a common area where price is moving, so let's let's look here. You see, before every major move, one of these patterns happen. Look at this move here. So you have an engulfing candle here. You have an engulfing candle there at the top of the move. You zoom out, and that started this downward move here, this engulfing handle, started this move here. And it's just over and over again. So now we go back here. Look, look what started. Look what started. Oh, wrong one. Look what started the continuation of that same down move. Doji followed by an engulfing candle. Doji followed by an engulfing candle. Or you can consider that, you know, the shooting star as well, because you have the bullish followed by the doji, followed by the bearish. So you see how they kind of mix into each other it's over and over again. They, they're giving you, they're giving you the hints. That's the crazy part about forex. It's not random. You just have to know what you're looking at. You go down here. And then if you have questions on any of this as far as the four and the candlestick patterns, you can go ahead and put them in the chat. To but over and over and over again, see, there's your gap. There's your gap open. We can go to and we can and it can go to any any pairs. If you look at even even like a pair like gold, right? So this big major move here. Let's look at what at the beginning of that move. You see a combination of two things. You see you see this right here, this evening star pattern. You see that. You also see if you go back, you also see kind of like that shooting star because you have the two bullish candles before your dojis and followed by the bearish candles. And then you have your doji up here. You have your inverted hammer here. It's a weak inverted hammer, but it's still one. So you see that before that major move, it gave you those hints that something is about to happen the way you kind of confirm it just i'm gonna go i'm gonna go one class ahead just for a minute is you cut you combine it with another another aspect of confirmation whether that is a common price level whether that's a common price level there you see how they a matchup. So you got common price levels here. So you have the move, you have the pullback, and you're trying to figure out because you know it's a downward momentum. You know that's the that's the market now is bearish because it was confirmed up here and then really confirmed with this move. So now you're looking for sales because you know it's downward momentum, and you're trying to figure out if this is a valid area 
for the market to continue to sell, to turn around and continue to sell, or to end the pullback. So you're looking at the markets and say, look, if we look here, let's see what, let's look what happened. The candles give you the story. So you have strong momentum followed by a plethora of dojis. So you're, so that's telling you that this area action is happening in this area. You already got your wick. Now I taught you about wicks last class. Now we're talking about dojis and shooting stars and inverted hammers and dojis. And now you're just looking for your confirmation because look at what's at the, what's at the end of every candlestick pattern. Confirmation, a confirmation, confirmation, confirmation. Every every major one has a confirmation. Even if we go, even if we go over here. Confirmation. We go back to what we're looking at over here. They all have a confirmation. See, this arrow is, you know, you're just looking for that momentum. That's what the arrow is indicating in this chart. All of them have confirmation. So now you know what's going on. You're just waiting for that confirmation candle. And now you got another sell. It really gets, it really gets that simple when it comes to the candlestick patterns. And then the only level above the candlestick patterns. And you can just look up forest candlestick patterns to look at different ones. Now this one's giving you a great, a great indication of a trade. So you had uh, a level over here. Now you have one confirmation of, of downward momentum and then it retested the level, but it gave you a shooting star here. You could have took it at the close of the shooting star and put your wick, put your stop loss above that wick, or you could have waited for that confirmation candle and continued to sell. But that's how it, that's how it lines up in the markets. See here, you have that downward, you have that upward momentum. You got your engulfing candle. Got your engulfing candle. You could have took a trade there, put your stop loss above the high of that engulfing candle, and let it come down. That's why it gets, that's how it gets so good. That's how you get precise in your entries when you're able to understand that. Yeah, you can understand areas and trend and, you know, where, where you think price is going to go. But if you want to have like more precise entries, you got to get down to the candle. So let's go to the second, the second part of everything. So. Let's do, let's do that cheat sheet actually. Here we go here. Where's the one I like to use? Here we go. Save image. Here's a cleaner one here. So save link, not save link, copy link. And I'm going to send this in the chat. Copy, copy link address. There we go. This way you have it. So basically, and let's uh, let's download this one. It's what I like to use. There we go here. So that's too blurry. Let's use this one. So now that you understand the candles. The candles also make shapes. And I'm just gonna focus on just a couple 
a couple shapes that I like to personally trade myself. Let me see if it's on that. Let's actually use this one. Let's see if I can zoom in. Nope. Give me one second. Here we go. I'm going to use this one. So these give you an outline of, so we have the candlestick moves. Let me see. Okay, let's do it this way. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it and then I'm going to post it in the chat. There we go. And then I'll post it. I'll post it in the description of the re recording. But you can you can just type chart patterns, cheat sheet, PDF, and it'll pull up stuff like this. So let's let's look at this one, right? There we go. That's way better. So you have the candlesticks. Those tell you the individual little movements. Now we, we zoom out a little bit. We look at the movements as a pattern. And you like us like with the candlesticks, you don't have to trade every pattern. Now, me, I personally trade maybe three of these patterns. So I trade my wet, I trade my wedge patterns. I'll trade a pin, I'll trade the flag, and I'll trade the pendant. Head and shoulders are great too. All these patterns work. It's just a matter of what you like to see and what you like to trade. So for me, I like to trade wedges, pennants, and flags. I like to trade those because you can. it's easier for me to see where this is going. I, one of my mentors, all he trades is head and shoulders. He does not trade a single other setup than a head and shoulders, and he makes a lot of money just doing that. So it's about what works for you. You can look at it, see what you like, but this class to make you aware of it. But let's let's look at let's look at identifying some patterns, right? Let's look at let's doing this. This is where you really start understanding. So, like when you start to see a pattern followed by a candlestick confirmation, and you combine it, you start to see some really powerful setups that can make you a lot of money. So let's start with the double top, or what a lot of people call the M formation. So you have your double top here. What this indicates, sort of like the same thing as a, a, a shooting star. You have bullish momentum, there's a stoppage, and then there's a shift. That's, that's basically a double top. And then same thing with the double bottom, bearish momentum, stoppage, and shift back up. So if we go back to our charts, we could find places in the markets where it happens. So let's, let's delete that. And if we look here, let's see, does it have it? No. But if we look here, oh, I know how to do it. Actually, you would see that you have your double top here. You have your double top here. So you have that bullish momentum, the stoppage, then there's the shift. It happens over and over again. So you got your shift there. Then you have it again here so you have it here and they can sometimes be ugly like that same things same things for your w's right let me look for a good w so here so actually i think i could do it with this one so you got your w's here Even even down to the even down to this level. And then it goes back up. They're everywhere on the charts. 
once you start to like, I'm making you aware of them because now what you're doing is you're looking on a chart for yourself and you're trying to find these patterns. Let's look for, let's look for another pattern. Let's go bullish. Let's go bullish flag. Let's go bullish flag to see if I can find one of those. Pulls right up. So let's do this. So you got your bullish flag. So you got your upward momentum and then followed by your flag here. And then it shifts back up. Well, what about what about the other way? Let's, what about the other way, like a bearish flag? All right, let's see if we can find one of those. Right here. So you got your, your downward momentum. Wasn't the best flag, but it's still counted. And more of a wedge than a flag, actually, now that I do it. And here's what, now that that brings it up, here's, here's what makes it a wedge different from a flag, right? So if we zoom back in here, oh, I actually have it on this. So if we zoom back here, you see that the flag pattern is relatively evenly spaced out, like the movements are even. Whereas a wedge pattern will create higher highs and higher lows, but it squeezes in the further you go. And it squeezes in an upward pattern, like it goes up as it squeezes in. That's your wedge pattern. A pendant, it, it goes sideways, but it squeezes in. Those are your three differences there. So this would be considered, if we go back here, that would be more of a wedge pattern. But they're every they're everywhere on the charts. Let's see. Let's look for a legit flag pattern. Some some markets like wedges more than flags. There's another bullish flag. So you just you get better at it as time goes on. So you have, and this is why it's a this is why it's a bullish flag. So you have your upward momentum. So you have your even upward and downward momentum. So you have this little move going here. And I'm just keep I'm just keeping it simple. Like I'm not gonna go into you know A, B, C, D. You're just seeing the little structure and that continuation. See how it continued here? You know, this one, this one's uglier, but it still counts as well. So you got this, and then You have this here. You have that little move going on and it continues forward. And then it's followed by another one, it continues forward. So here, and then look at this one. This would be considered a pendant because remember how it stays, stays even, but then it squeezes in like that. So that would be your, your bearish pendant and it continues forward. And even, even this would be considered a pendant as well because it squeezes, it kind of squeezes at the end. They're not, they're not, if it was perfect every time, everybody would be rich. So that sometimes it's the markets make it a little bit uglier so you don't notice it. And that'll do the point here. And then we go back to Forex back to Forex pairs, uh, wedge pattern. And literally like this is, this is the challenge. Get that cheat sheet and then start looking for these patterns on your own. And you see how this goes up. Let me show you why. Let me show you why. have a expanding try you have a descending wedge here so what does a descending wedge do right because a lot you've been getting the pattern of these forex patterns they are continuation patterns and all, all of them are not continuation patterns 
a lot, some of them are reversal patterns. So when you have a falling wedge, when you have a falling wedge, which is, this is all bearish. Where's my bearish ones? I mean, my bullish ones. So you have a bullish falling wedge. So it's this one right here. You have your downward momentum, then it squeezes, then it reverses. Look, that's what this is. It goes back up. Look, and then look up here before this major move here. You have your you have your wedge going on right here. Go back. Let's see if we can find it. Where is it at? There it is. Bearish rising wedge. So you have your upward momentum, your big strong up move. Then it squeezes in and reverses. So it squeezes in and reverses. Almost every move has something like that going on. Now the last one is gonna be a head and shoulders. So if we look at, if we look at the markets here, right? Head and shoulders takes a little bit more time to identify. And it's, and a head and shoulders is more versatile to identify. So here's the easiest way to understand the head and shoulders. You have a, a high followed by a higher high, which is followed by a lower high. As long as it meets that criteria, so let me, so instead of saying left shoulder, you have a, the first high. So first high, I'll, I'll type it out. And then the second one is a higher high. Followed by a lower high. I, when I was new to this, it took me forever to try to identify um, head and shoulders patterns. Then my mentor, the one who only trades head and shoulders patterns, he's like, don't worry about it trying to find head and shoulders. All you're looking for is high followed by a higher high followed by a lower high. So with that, with that in mind, the same and it's the opposite for inverted head and shoulders. And when you start to look at it that way, you can find these patterns a lot easier. So, and a lot of the head and shoulders are on the one hour. So here, here's for example here. It gets ugly. Sometimes it gets ugly. So you have your low, this is the inverted head and shoulders, you have a low followed by a lower low, which is followed by a higher low. That's the head and shoulders. Ugly, but it's true. Then you start to really see it, you start to notice it more. So you have your high, followed by a higher high, which is followed by a lower high. That's a head and shoulders. So now when you start to see it, you start to not be so strict on what it is because you know that you're following the rules still. And then when you start to see it, they start to they start to pile on everywhere. Zoom out. And as long as the first high and the lower high are, you know, somewhat similar level, then it counts. So look here. Another ugly example, but it still counts. Let me move it over so you can see it. So you have, where was I at? Here. So you have a high. Let me 
me zoom back in. And followed by a lower high. The head and shoulders can get pretty ugly. That's why I don't trade it all the time. But you get the point. We can move on. So does anybody have any questions about any of the Forex candlestick patterns, like the chart patterns? No, definitely, if, you're if you want to maybe take a screenshot, that way you have it. But the main thing is, it's not to necessarily have you memorize each one of these. It's not the, that's not the object of this lesson, is to make you aware that they exist. Because when you're aware that they exist and you're trading and you're noticing it, then it gives you clarity on what to do. It makes it easier on what to do. Show more. So, it's, are any of these pair, any pairs that show more of these patterns in comparison to other pairs? Um, not really. Not really. In the U.S. pairs, they may show more head and shoulders. Like as soon as I open one. As soon as I open one, you see you see an ugly one, but you see it. Like U.S. pairs may show more head and shoulders. Um, that that one that one I have noticed, and then European pairs would show like a lot of flag patterns. That's something else that I noticed, and. I think the Great British pair shows a lot of triangles or double or M's and W's. So you see here, you got your triangle there. I didn't really go over triangles. So you got your triangle right there. And it kind of just kind of repeats itself over and over again. Got another triangle. So somewhat like that, and, you, and you'll notice this more when you when you trade pairs. So what I would I would suggest is like when you're starting out, maybe pick two or three pairs. Don't worry about trying to understand every pair. Now, if you have our software arrow, it's a lot easier to trade more pairs than one when you're new. But like if you're doing it the old school way, trying to understand you know more for yourself on a deeper level. Pick a couple pairs and really get familiar with them. Get that and really get familiar with them. So, like for example, here where was where is my trade at? This is on the four hour. So, for example, it didn't go all the way, but I noticed, but I noticed that this was. This was one of like, kind of like a, a wedge pattern here. So like a descending wedge. Now I didn't go as high as I wanted. I still made money on this trade. I still made money, but I identified this trade because I saw that this was a descending wedge pattern for a bullish for a bullish move up. Now the bullish move up wasn't as big as I wanted, but because I identified that, I was able to catch that trade. What's another one that I did? It was GCAT, another one of my bigger trades. So here, it was one of my other bigger trades. So I noticed that it already gave me one bearish flag pattern, right? So we had this right here. And if I went to the 30 minute, you probably see it better. Here we go. So you had this right here, this little, this little notion there. Well, I saw the same thing kind of repeating itself right away. Not as pretty and not necessarily a flag pattern. So I wouldn't necessarily consider a flag pattern. What I would consider it, it's more of a pendant. As it started squeezing 
and I caught this whole move down. And it's not necessary. You're not necessarily looking for the exact shape. That's that was the biggest thing that hung me over when I was trading. You're not looking for the exact shape. You're looking for the rules of that pattern to identify itself. So like with the head and shoulders. So like, oh, there, so there's, here's the head and shoulders right here. So you got your left shoulder followed by your head followed by your right shoulder. You see how that level, that shoulder level was somewhat similar. And then it created that move up. But look what it created right after that first move up. These patterns repeat itself over and over again. You have a flag pattern. So you have your flag pattern here and a cleaner flag pattern. And then that move created itself back up. So as you identify these things, it just becomes a lot easier. See, it created a whole new move back up. It becomes a lot easier to trade the markets. And you can trade the markets, you know, with just the naked charts. Now, it takes more work. That's why our software makes it so much easier for you because you can do it faster. But if you were to do it without it, you can be able to do it if you understand these patterns. So that's the that's the gist of the entire thing. So get your get your um, cheat sheet and work on looking at these patterns for yourself. Start with the candlestick patterns. Start with the candlestick patterns. You know, maybe let me show you which one I like. Let me go, and I'll probably I'll probably find it and post it in our fourteen day group. So let me see if I can zoom out there. So we got, let me save this. I like this one. No, let me save that bearish. And we look at this one. I like this one, this one's simple. This one's simple. So I'll post this in our 14 day uh, group, but take it upon yourself because chart time is what makes it stick. Like the whole point is to make you aware of what's going on. And then because now with these next, these next classes, they're gonna get more and more detail with the charts. So we did candlesticks and we did chart patterns today. So go back, look at these for yourself, identify these, take a pair, you know, pick a pair, USD, JPY, like pick a random pair. This is how you really learn. Pick a random pair and go back a week or go on a one hour time frame and go back like a, a couple weeks as far as, or a month actually on a one hour time frame, a month and see if you, you can identify just like this, if you can identify different 